Hi everyone, Baker on the Dark Side. So getting ready for Easter and I decided to break out one of my old time recipes, uh, sour cream apple walnut pie. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the filling. And this is uh, 10 ounces of sugar, granulated sugar. And we're gonna add a quarter cup of flour. And we're gonna add a third of a teaspoon of ginger. And then one and a half cups of sour cream. So unlike the apple pie that you normally used to, this is actually going to make the filling instead of the just cinnamon and sugar and flour. This is a sour cream version that kind of gives it almost like a cheesecakey vibe um, for the filling. So you're gonna mix this up really good. The ginger kind of brings out that flavor that, that um, gives a little spice where normally you would use cinnamon. This one uses ginger. So I'm just mixing this up with a whisk. And you just want that to sit. Now you don't want to make this the night before because it'll make it really runny. But it's okay to make it a little bit in advance because there's different components to the pie. So this is what it looks like, okay? There's the consistency you're looking for, kind of like a cheesecake consistency. Okay, we're going on to the next one. Hi everyone, I'm back for the next part. So this is going to be a pie with a crumb topping. So we did the filling, the sour cream fillings in the fridge. Now we're going to make the crumb topping that goes on it. So this is the um, crumb walnut topping. So very simple. We're gonna start with a cup of all-purpose flour. This is half. And this is one. We're going to put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna put in half a teaspoon of salt. Light salt, you know. You know how I am. Yep, I'm putting it over here. I'm gonna be risky. Okay. And then a third of a cup of white sugar and a third of a cup of brown sugar. That's gonna go into the food processor. I find the food processor is the best when it comes to making toppings like this. All right. And turn on. Can we get those all incorporated? Easy, easy. You can use this crumb topping for any pie. Um, if you don't want the walnuts, you don't have to have the walnuts. It's fine. All right, so now the next thing is melted butter. So I'm starting with four tablespoons of melted butter. Um, it's one of those things where you know, but based on your measuring, whether you might need a little less, you might need a little more, but we're going to start with four. Pour it in. And you're waiting for it to get a little bit like a crumb. You want it to get a little thick. It might take a minute. And then I just want to... Um, Kind of scrape it a little bit. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Because, <laughs> you know, with this, sometimes it can get stuck on the sides. But it does look really good. Definitely looks like a nice crumb topping. And at this point, what I want to do is I want to put the walnuts in. So I don't usually measure my walnuts too much. <laughs> But for you guys, I'm going to measure my walnuts. <laughs> you know that grandma trick where your grandma says, yeah, you put a pinch of that in and a dash of that in. Yeah, well, that's where I'm at. That's why I'm making recipes. But this is my recipe. So um, I'm putting some half a cup of walnut halves. Uh, you can use pecans. You can use different nuts if you want. I don't want to overdo this. I just want, I do, I don't mind if the walnuts are a little chunky. So, it is a crumb topping. It looks pretty good. Does it hold together when I squeeze it? Yeah, it does. See that? That's how you know your crumb topping is right. If it was falling apart, and I, I usually test like two different 
sections to make sure. And if it squeezes together in both sections, then it's ready. Now, I've got the filling all set. The next thing we're gonna do is the apples. I'm not gonna make you watch me peel apples. <laughs> so I'm gonna peel the apples and then, ooh, then I'm gonna come back. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to kind of give you another helpful hint about apple pie. So when you make apple pie, the key to making a good apple pie is to use different textured apples in the pie. So I have my two sour tart baking Granny Smith apples. So those are the green apples. I have one Fuji apple, which is kind of more of a juicier apple. And then I have three Macintosh apples, two pounds of apples total for one pie. The reason you use the different ones is so that you can get a different texture. So you've got those solid apples that are gonna hold the body. You've got the Fuji apple, it's gonna give you some juiciness. And you've got the Macintosh apples that also are good baking apples that are medium textured. So that will help you without having watery pie. Okay, just wanna give you that here. Okay, everyone, so I rolled out the pie dough. I had one in the freezer, I thawed it out and I put it in this nice stoneware pie pan. I used to make this in a cheesecake pan because uh, it's gotta be kind of deep dish, but I thought since for this video, I should probably put it in a pie pan, and I got this pie pan for a quarter, so why not, right? Okay, so um, the pie's shell is unbaked, and I put it in here. This is a nine inch uh, pie pan. So the next thing we're gonna do is I've already peeled all the apples, and I've, I strained them, they got a little brown, but I did put um, the lemon juice and the uh, water to keep them from browning. And then I drained them so they got a little brown. But they're all different kinds of apples, like I said. So we're going to put some apples in the bottom, like half. And then we're going to spring, pour half of the sour cream mixture that we had in the refrigerator over the top. Okay, I'm gonna settle that down a little bit. And then we're gonna put the rest of the apples. So um, this is going to be kind of a flat pie. It's not gonna be really mounded up high, okay? And it's got a lot of crumb topping that fills in the rest. And the reason why you use those Granny Smith apples is because they don't cook down as much. I probably could have put another apple in here, but it'll all work out. <laughs> it'll still taste good. All right, now we're gonna pour the rest of the sour cream mixture over it. There's that. I'm just gonna fill that in, flatten it out a little. Okay, like that. And then we're going to put the crumb topping on. So you're just gonna put that on and spread it around. So like I said, this has a lot of crumb topping because some of it goes down in the crevices. And who doesn't love crumb topping, right? I mean, yum. <laughs> That's the best part, I think. You just put the apples in there so it seems a little more nutritious, right? <laughs> the apples are just there to complement the crumb. All right, so there's the crumb topping. I like to put as well, all of it in there. Okay, then what I did is I had a few leftover scraps of pie dough, and my grandma did this. So I took some cinnamon sugar and I put them into the scraps and I added a few more walnuts, and I'm gonna put this over the top. Just, uh, why not, right? Just for fun, just to use up that pie dough and not throw it out. 
All right. And there it is. So now we're going to bake it. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh, this is heavy. <laughs> so we're going to bake it. Uh, 375 degrees. It does take a long time to bake. Let me check my recipe. At least 40 to 45 minutes. You want to make sure those apples are cooked. All right, see you when it's done. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we are on the final step of the pie. Let me tell you, this smells incredible. Oh, man, smell a vision. I wish you had it. But see, that's what it looks like. I just wanted to show you really quickly. So how do you know it's done? Well, obviously it's golden brown. That's the first thing. Um, and so then you take a knife and you go through it and you see that it just went right through. No resistance at all. So those apples are cooked. And this pie has a sour cream custard. So this is a pie that you should keep cold. It sounds weird, but yes, it's gotta be cold. It's like a cheesecake pie. So it's gotta cool down. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator. And then when we cut it tomorrow, I'll show you what it looks like on the inside for Easter. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed my crazy cooking baking day today. <laughs> and I hope you uh, like these recipes. Thanks grandpa for the potato salad. <laughs> and this is my own recipe that I used to make when I was a baker. And I hope you all have a great holiday. And if you get a chance, subscribe and have fun with me.